everyone, and welcome. Get ready for a deep dive into the Four Agreements. This book by Don Miguel Ruiz is like, whoa, a guidebook to breaking free from, you know, our own minds. It's amazing how Ruiz takes these ancient Toltec ideas yeah. and makes them like totally relatable today. Right. Like he starts with this whole domestication thing. And I'm like, domestication? Wait, are we talking about house pets here? But then he explains it so well. Yeah. He's basically saying we're all kind of raised with these like these rules, right? Yeah. And we follow them. We get like approval, affection, all the good stuff. Oh, totally. It's like stay inside the lines and you'll get a gold star. Exactly. But then, you know, Locke's not always about staying inside the lines. And that's where things get, you know, messy. Messy. Yeah. Because those rules, those shoulds and shouldn'ts, they kind of get like internalized. Mm -hmm. They become this book of law that we carry around inside. Oh, tell me about it. It's like having this inner critic who's always watching, judging, evaluating. And that's the judge, right? That voice in our heads that's always using that book of law against us. And the worst part, when we inevitably mess up, because who doesn't? Right. Who's there waiting to pile on the guilt, right. the victim, right? Exactly. And the victim's all like, see, I told you you're not good enough. You messed up again. Uh, it's like a never-ending cycle of self-sabotage. It is. Ruiz calls it. The dream of the planet. Whoa, the dream of the planet. Yeah, it's like this collective nightmare we're all trapped in. Of fear and drama and just like general unhappiness. Exactly. But the good news is it's just a dream, which means... We can wake up. Exactly. And that's where the four agreements come in. It's like there are these keys to unlocking ourselves from this nightmare. Totally. And it all starts with being impeccable with our word. Which, okay, at first I thought impeccable, like never swear, yeah. always say please and thank you. Right. But it's so much deeper than that. Oh, absolutely. It's about recognizing that our words have, like, actual power. They do. They can create. Yeah. They can destroy. They can, like, literally change someone's entire reality. It's kind of like magic when you think about it. It is. Like, remember that story Ruiz tells about the little girl with the amazing singing voice? And her own mom tells her to be quiet because she has an ugly voice. Oh, heartbreaking, right. Seriously, talk about a spell being cast. And the worst part is, it happens all the time. Right, we're constantly throwing these careless words around, these little digs, these judgments. And we don't even realize the impact they're having. Exactly. So being impeccable with our word, it's about being mindful of that power, especially when it comes to how we talk to ourselves. Yes, because that inner dialogue, that constant chatter in our minds, that's where it all begins. Okay, so we've got to be impeccable with our words. Right. Check. That brings us to... Agreement number two, which is... Don't take anything personally. Oh, man, that one's tough. It is. Because, like, how often does someone's, you know, bad mood or, like, a random comment just totally throw you off? All the time, right. And Ruiz would say that's because we're operating from this place of, like, personal importance. Personal importance. Yeah, like, oh. we think everything's about us. Oh, Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty ego driven when you really think about it. It is. We make ourselves the center of everyone else's universe. Yeah. And then we wonder why we're so exhausted all the time. Right. But the truth is, everyone's just kind of, you know, living in their own movie. Their own little world. Exactly. Yeah. But their own stuff going on. So when we take things personally. We're basically like. Giving away our power. Yeah, we're letting someone else control how we feel. OK, so how do we like not do that because the feelings are still going to be there right sure and it's not about like pretending we don't feel them right it's about seeing them as like information information yeah like okay this thing made me feel this way what does that tell me about me interesting maybe it's an old wound that needs healing or maybe it's a sign we need to like set a boundary oh boundaries yeah that's a whole other exactly but the point is we get to choose how we respond we have a choice always and that brings us to agreement number three. Okay. Hit me with it. Don't make assumptions. Uh, assumptions. The root of all evil, right? Seriously. So much drama comes from, it, like, just making stuff up in our heads. Right. And it's usually because we're afraid of something. Like, afraid to just ask. Exactly. We're afraid to ask for clarification, afraid of hearing something we don't want to hear. So much easier to just, like, invent our own reality. All right. Right? Even if it's totally off base. So how do we stop assuming? Because it feels like, I don't know, kind of ingrained, you know? It is. It takes practice, for sure. But it starts with, like, getting really honest with ourselves about why we're assuming in the first place. Like, what's that fear underneath it all? Exactly. And it's about communication. 
being willing to be vulnerable, ask questions, even if it feels scary. So much easier said than done. For sure. But the rewards are huge. Okay, so no more assumptions. What's the final agreement? Always do your best. Hmm. Okay. See, this one always makes me think of, like, burnout culture. I know, right? Mm -hmm. But Ruiz isn't saying we have to be on all the time. Okay, good. He's actually really clear that our best is going to look different from day to day. Right. Some days, our best is getting out of bed. Amen to that. It really is. And you know what else really stuck with me? That story about the guy who goes to the master to ask about, like, how to reach enlightenment through meditation. Oh, yeah. I love that one. So the guy's like, okay, if I meditate for, like, four hours a day, how long will it take? Right. And the master's like, 10 years, maybe? And the guy's like, okay, okay, but what if I double it? What if I meditate for eight hours a day? And the master's like... 20 years. I know. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's so brilliant because it shows how much we get caught up in, like, the outcome, you oh, know? Oh, totally. We're so busy trying to get somewhere that we forget to, like, actually enjoy the journey. Exactly. And then we end up just feeling stressed and behind and, like, never good enough. Which is the opposite of what we're going for. Right. right? Totally. So always doing our best. It's not about being perfect. It's about being present. Yes. And bringing that presence mm -hmm. to whatever it is we're doing, even if it's just, like you said, getting out of bed. Some days, that's a major win, right? Absolutely. And that ties into this whole idea of personal heaven that Ruiz talks about. Ooh, personal heaven. I like the sound of that. Right. It's not about reaching some, like, far-off destination. It's about cultivating eh. that sense of peace and fulfillment, like, right here, right now. Okay, sign me up. But, like, seriously, how do we actually do that? It's about making conscious choices, Yeah, you know, like moment to moment, we can choose to align ourselves with these agreements. So it's an ongoing process. Totally. We're going to mess up. We're going to fall back into old patterns. But the key is to just keep coming back to these agreements. Keep coming back to ourselves. Exactly. This has been amazing. But before we wrap up, I want to circle back to that whole smoky mirror thing from the beginning. Ooh, yeah, good one. Because it's like we're all looking at ourselves and each other through this, like, this haze of limiting beliefs, you know? And that creates the mito, that inner chatter that just keeps us stuck. Exactly. But the good news is we can clean the smoke off the mirror. I can. The four agreements are like the tools to do it. They are. So as we wrap up our deep dive into the four agreements, we want to leave you with this. What's one small step you can take today to apply these agreements in your own life? Maybe it's choosing to speak a little more kindly to yourself, or maybe it's just noticing when you're making an assumption and choosing to ask a question instead. Whatever it is for you, remember you have the power to change your life. One agreement, one thought, one choice at a time. Thanks for joining us on this journey. We'll see you on our next deep dive.